Good morning. Hey, it is Friday, July 10th. And we are at the end of Genesis. I'm gonna wait for a few people to pop on here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> so amazed to see that we have gone through this entire book. Cannot wait for tomorrow when we share in our Zoom call final day of being together in the book of Genesis. So Hallelujah. Okay, well, today we have the last part of. Look at this. Look at, look at all this. Look at what we've done. Look at it. Oh my gosh, we should all be so proud of being in this book for these. Today is um, the 98th day. I was trying to make it to 100, but it's actually the 98th day today. Well, so it's actually probably since April 1st, the 100th day since we started, but we've only been in here 98 days, but that's still such a beautiful uh, testimony, isn't it? Strengthening ourselves in the Lord, that's what we're doing. Strengthening yourself in the Lord, the understanding of his word, the understanding of origins, where everything came from, who our creator is. I can't wait for the Zoom call tomorrow to recap all of this with you. Get your thoughts about your favorite parts. And um, so regarding that Zoom call, I'll say this at the end too in case we need to uh, go over it again. but. It'll happen at 8 o'clock in the morning, and if you want to join us, I will try to invite you by your emails. Hi, hi, Michelle. And um, you know, I'll try to invite you by the emails that you gave me, or <clears throat> I will also post on my Facebook page uh, the link into the Zoom call. Once you get into uh, the Zoom call, you have to request come into the chat room. It's a sidebar, I believe, or it could be at the bottom of your screen. And um, then on my side, it says someone's waiting. And I click you in. So um, I hope everything goes well. Sometimes they surprise me. If, if everything backfires <laughs> tomorrow, uh, we'll think we'll do something. I don't know what we'll do, but praying that it won't. Hi, Gail. Good morning. So here we are, you guys. I just want to take a deep breath because not only are we at the end, which is so bittersweet for me, I don't know how you feel, but it's like we've been running a marathon together and we're just about at the finish line here. Um, this section, I know I say this a lot, but this section is full of glory. This section is so full of comfort and promises. This section is so nice of the Lord to end with. <laughs> so many scriptures that we're going to go across, cross-reference. So we've been traveling with Joseph now for several weeks through his life. Doesn't he feel like a friend? Don't you feel you, like you know him like a brother? Don't you admire him? And do you see that he is a type of Christ? And that just means that in the Old Testament, he's exemplifying in many ways what Jesus would be like or go through when he was on the earth. So <clears throat> just imagine that when the Lord is done with us here, Stop and think about this for a moment, because this is the 
truth, you are going to actually see not only the Lord Jesus Christ face to face, but all of these people, like Joseph, like Abraham, like Noah, that we get to, we get to see them. My husband's already seen them. <laughs> I'm just like, what? It makes you shake your head, doesn't it? Just So let's get into this amazing, amazing ending here in Genesis. It's full of promise. So we're starting in verse 15, and we're going to go through 26. Joseph comforts his brothers. When the brothers realized they were now without their father. Yesterday we read all about Jacob's passing. They said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and decides to pay us back for all the trouble we brought on him? So the enemy never stops. He plays the same old song. And they're troubled because they're worried that Joseph hasn't truly forgiven them. But you know what? I believe that God let that happen because the scriptures that we're going to read in this paragraph are really something that you should take through your life with you. Watch this. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before he died, your father left us this instruction, Joseph. This is their message to him. Tell Joseph that I beg him to completely forgive the sin of his brothers who treated him so harshly. Now, please forgive us, servants of the God, of your father, of the horrible wrong we did to you. You know what Joseph's response was? He cried and he wept as they read this message to him. He cried and he wept. He didn't try to cover up his heart. He didn't give them a stone wall or a rigid poker face. He cried and he wept. Again, being a type of Christ, showing us what true manhood is, looks like. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph's feet, saying, We are here as your slaves. Like they were afraid that maybe with their dad gone, he could do whatever he wanted with them. And they were begging for mercy, just to make sure. But Joseph dried his tears and said, Don't be afraid. Say that out loud together. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I can't hear those words enough. Don't be afraid. Joseph is speaking through hundreds of years right now, saying to us, don't be afraid. How could I ever take the place of God? Nobody can take the place of God. And this next verse is the one I want you to carry with you out of the book of Genesis. Even though you intended to hurt me, God intended it for good. It was his plan all along to ensure the survival of many people. Even though you intended to hurt me, God intended it for good. Even though you wanted to harm me, God has used this for good. Not just for me, but for the entire nation. So don't worry. I myself will provide for you all that you need, both for you and your little ones. Then with more kind and reassuring words, Joseph comforted his brothers. It doesn't record here what he said, but he continued to be kind and he continued to comfort them. He didn't try to use it um, in any way for his benefit that they, that they were begging for mercy. He just came and comforted them with tears Telling them, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Isn't that, I mean, think back to when they initially were so um, jealous of him and threw him in the pit. And he was yelling for help and asking to come out. And you know, the Lord showed me something here, that this is a platform for reconciliation, that this this declaration 
that Joseph was able to make through his own testing with God and through his own perseverance and through what God proved through him all those years in prison. This was the, the declaration he could make with his mouth that would be the platform for reconciliation. And I think that the Lord was giving me a word for today that there is a spirit of reconciliation that can only come out of our mouth with our own declarations. And so when we declare um, over our nation, for, for instance, over um, this, the current state of our nation, um, even though you intended to hurt me, God intended it for good. It was his plan all along. Even when we can leave things in God's hands, past hurts, um, um, I'm thinking mostly about the racial reconciliation that needs to happen right now. And we can leave all of those things in God's hands, which so many of our brothers and sisters have decided, made a choice to do that and let God be God and let God bring about what he wants, the justice that he wants, and for them to just relax. It took, took great faith for those people and for people like me who've had racial tension in my past too. Just to take that faith and that step of faith to trust God for any of the uh, bullying or anything that we've incurred along in our life. Um, this is a platform of reconciliation when we can speak it out with our mouth and say, don't worry, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of me your brother or your sister, because whatever you did that you meant to harm me and you actually did, like we could all say things like I have pictures in my own mind of what happened to me, or maybe someone else has a picture in their mind of something that happened to them. Whatever you did that you meant to harm me, God turned it around for good. If for not, no other reason he caused me to trust him, no other reason he caused me to put him as Lord of my life and not you, not what you did. He can bring about the healing that we all need. So if we get this into our spirit, I think today as a, also like a, a handle to hold on to from the Lord, if we can really let this land somewhere and then begin to declare it, I really think that there will become the ministers of reconciliation into the earth as we need to have and a spirit of reconciliation. But the body of Christ has to get a hold of this word that I'm giving you right now so that there is a platform. It's like a it's like you know how you can have a root of bitterness? This would be our root of goodness. A root that would go down deep inside of us that would lead us on a level path as ministers of reconciliation. think. Don't worry, I myself will provide for you all that you need, both for you and your little ones. And um, so before we go into the last section of this, this chapter in this book, I want to read to you what the author has written here. So in verse 17, it says, their shame brought him to tears without hesitation offered them reassurance and forgiveness. Joseph spoke kindly to those who hurt him and he comforted their hearts. He refused to harbor a grudge. That speaks to me so much. He refused to treat them differently. That speaks to me so much. Those two things are always calling out to me. Treat them differently or harbor a grudge. And I don't want to do that. So he refused these two options, these two fleshly choices, and he chose the better response, which was to comfort them, to reassure them. Um, in verse 19, only God can judge, for he has perfect love and knows all things. Since we are not in the place of God, our only choice and our only right is to forgive. 
Many assume the role of a judge when they have someone cornered and vulnerable. And this is what I mean by these, all these men were cornered and vulnerable and, got, and Joseph did not use this to his advantage. He wept and he comforted them. But Joseph refused to do anything to judge them. He understood that God turned the evil intentions of others into something good. God has the power to transform pain into blessing when we love him through it all. So I want to bless us with the power from the Lord Jesus to turn our pain into good. I want to bless us with the transformational power of the Lord to turn our pain into blessing when we love him through all of it choose to stand up and worship him in pain. Let this pain be turned to blessing in Jesus' name. Let it be turned to blessing in Jesus' name, not only for you, but for those that you have influence. In Jesus' name. Um, then with more kind, reassuring words, Joseph comforted his brothers. And it says further up above, it was his plan all along. It was God's plan all along. He never lost sight of me in the prison. He never lost sight of me when Potiphar's wife was haunting me or accusing me. He never lost sight of me when the baker and the um, cupbearer forgot about me. He never lost sight of me. He never lost sight of me. Thank you, Jesus never lose sight of us. I want to read you a couple of scriptures that you might want to write down that go along with this beautiful section. And all of this is in the Passion Translation. The first two are in Proverbs. And um, this first one is Proverbs 16, 9. It says, within your heart, you can make plans for your future, but the Lord chooses the steps you take to so if you feel detoured, that you are in Christ, you're not detoured. He chose the steps to get you to your future. He chose the path to get you right where you are. And then Proverbs 20, 24 says, It is the Lord who directs your life, for each step you take is ordained by God to bring you closer to your destiny. So much of your life then remains a mystery. So the question is, can we live in the mystery of where we are today? You know, because we might feel like we're detoured or off the path or something is amiss or we're not where we're supposed to be. And God is saying, no, let me read that again. Proverbs 20, 24. It is the Lord who is directing your life. Okay, so... Let's say this out loud. You can say this after me. It's the Lord who's directing my life. Each step I take is ordained by God. He is bringing me much closer to my destiny. So much of my life will remain a mystery. And can we be okay with that? we be okay with knowing that we don't know everything? We don't know why. In my life, I don't know why everyone came to me with a why did my spouse go before me. I don't know. I have to be content with the mystery of that. And I have to let God be God. And so do you. There are mysteries in your life and in your path, but God has not forgotten you. Okay, and then the, the verse that we all know, Romans 8, 28, but this is also in the Passion Translation. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually, continually woven together. Every detail of our life is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan, not imperfect plan, but his perfect plan of bringing good into our lives, 
for we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. We have been called to fulfill. Do you know you have something to fulfill? You have a fulfillment of his divine designed purpose. And he's weaving together every detail of our life to bring it, to bring us to our, uh, the fulfillment of our designed purpose. So God's never out of the picture. He's never out of, we're never out of his sight. We're never out of his reach. We're never out of step if we're yielded to him. I mean, the temptation is there in the mystery. When there is a long season of suffering, that's called mystery. Do you know that you and I can remind each other of this? You're in a long season of suffering with illness. You're in a long season of uh, suffering with a job loss. You're in a long season of a child who is not following the Lord. This is the mystery. We have to be okay in the mystery. In fact, you can worship from the mystery. That is a delight to the Lord. He's not playing with us. He's not, I don't mean it in a way like he's, you know, trying to play with our emotions or our life or some, you know, get something out of us going through pain. That's not it at all. He's so for us. He's right in the midst of right in the midst of the job loss with us. He's right in the midst of the mystery of the sickness with us. And that long projected season, he's walking with us. And we have to remind each other that through the mystery there, God is right there. So here's, here's where we first find out that someone's gone off into a different lifestyle and someone that we really love. And so we start to worry about them. And then we start turn that worry into prayer. And then we start to declare who they really are in their identity. And then we realize that all through here, here's God right here going along with us. So there's the two of us going along in the mystery of it. And all the while, he's got the reassurance of his divine plan that he's working out and we need to go, I'm partnering with you. I'm partnering with you. I got the initial blow of this news. My flesh told me to worry. I listened to my flesh. Okay, I, I repent. Now I'm going to come to you and begin to um, pray for my loved one. And then now I have the strength and the faith to really call out their identity and who they are and see the gold in them and treat them no differently and not stand be standoffish from them and not... Um, leave them in their vulnerable place and they and you're teaching me all along the way how my character is being shaped because you're showing me how to treat this person and I left my flesh back here <clears throat> and now I'm going to just keep going with you in the mystery of it till you work it out because your word says in Romans 8 28 I will remind you Every detail of my life and this person's life is being continually woven together to fit into God's, your perfect plan. And we are going to fulfill your purpose. Amen. Okay. Last day of Genesis. Can't believe this is happening. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Donna. Oh, thank you, Jesus these precious people. All right, here's the very last section. I don't want to cry. Joseph dies in Egypt. Joseph lived in Egypt along with his father's family and lived to be 110. He lived to see the third generation of Ephraim's children. And Joseph also lived to see the children of Machir, son of Manasseh. And Joseph gave Machir's children inheritance rights. Then Joseph declared to his brothers, I will die one day. Being honest, I'm going to die. I'm 110. But God, but God 
will certainly come to you and fulfill his promises to bring you and your descendants from this land and lead you to the land he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Joseph had his and his brothers. Sorry, so Joseph had his brothers, the sons of Israel, make a solemn oath saying. When God comes to you, you will carry my bones up from Egypt. Because he wanted to be buried with his fathers. Joseph, okay, and he says, when God comes to you. I'm going to tell you what that means in a minute. Last verse of Genesis. Joseph died at the age of 110. And he was embalmed and placed in. So, bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All I can say is, we did it. We just finished the book of Genesis, the reading of it. Let me give you a couple of thoughts about this last section when Joseph was to be with the Lord. We learn from the Egyptian writings that 110 years was the ideal lifespan. <laughs> they lived to be 110 ideally. <clears throat> that, was, so that means some lived to be older, some lived to be younger, but about 110 was the norm. And um, then in verse 25, when he says, when God comes to you, you'll carry my bones up out of Egypt. Joseph was fixing his eyes on eternity here. He foresaw life beyond the grave by his astonishing declaration about his bones being carried up from Egypt. Joseph proclaimed he lived for the promises rather than temporal concerns. He refused to be identified with his successes or accomplishments or the blessings on his life. He just wanted to be identified with God's promises. And so he proclaimed that his home was not Egypt, but it was indeed the promised land. And I want to read this in Hebrews 11:22 says, faith inspired Joseph and opened his eyes to see into the future. For as he was dying, he prophesied about the exodus of Israel out of Egypt. So he was prophesying moments before he went to be with the Lord, telling them that they would indeed leave Egypt one day and that they would return to the promised land gave instructions that his bones were to be taken from Egypt with them. Now listen, these guys that were at his side didn't get to see that, but you know what? They heard it, and then they had the opportunity to declare it and to speak out of their mouth the truth about what was going to be happening in the future with the, with the Israelites. So we get to do the same thing have the spoken, living word of God to tell other people what's coming down the pike. <laughs> so that was the Passion Translation to Hebrews 11, 22. And I just admire Joseph for taking his last breath and explaining to them what would be happening. And just focusing on Jesus and focusing on eternity, focusing on God, I should say. Um, all right, so I'm not going to read the rest of this. So, there you have it. The book of Genesis. Yay! So, um, tomorrow... Uh, we are going
going to um, we are going to um, gather together at eight o'clock. And as I was saying at the beginning here, I'll I'll um, invite you through your email, or I'll invite you um, if you go on Facebook on my page. I'll try to put the link there and. Um, I would love to meet with you if you could set your clock and you want to comment and be face to face. It would just be a blessing to me to see your faces because I've just been staring at myself for almost 100 days. <laughs> and I would love to connect with you in that way. And tomorrow we will um, just, just say hello to one another. It will just be like our normal time from like 8 to 8.30. And... Um, and you can see who you've been going through this with. Hopefully there'll be a few of us on there. And um, most importantly, I'm going to tell you tomorrow what the plan is for the next online devotional. Because I think I've got a plan from the Lord. And um, I will tell you that tomorrow. So I am so grateful for you all. I want to just thank you, Donna, and thank you, Christine, and Gail, and Michelle. I think those are the people that are on here with me today. I hope I'm not missing someone. Thank you for coming and joining me for this last day. It's, it feels so strange to be done in a way, but it's so, I feel so full. I feel I don't know if it's just because I think it helps when you're the one teaching or leading. I think you learn more. So I feel like I've really learned a lot this time, but I hope that you guys have too. Um, and I encourage you to um, stay in the word. Yes, and Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Stay in the word. Even even during the break that we will take, I'll give you that much information. We'll take a break because I won't start something right up the next day. I, I need, honestly, I need to be able to sleep in a few days or weeks before I start up all this again. Um, and I want to, um, you know, when I initially started this in April at 8 a.m., I did it because I knew that so many people were staying home and didn't have to get up for work, but could still be getting up and getting into the Word. I was trying to make sure that we got in the Word before we started our day. And um, Of course, all of you know how to do that on your own. Of course, you've been feeding yourself for years, but I just wanted to offer the opportunity of community, even if it's online. And um, so all that to say, I don't know if eight o'clock's the best time for everybody. If we go into further opening up and people are leaving for work and all of that. And I realize sometimes you gotta just catch us later. We can decide that too. And um, so tomorrow's conversation will be you showing me your mug of what you're drinking Excuse me, and um, it's a time of blessing, I hope. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I will see you tomorrow. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being uh, attached to me in this way. For, um, our, you know, the greater purposes of God during unusual time in our history. Thank you for journeying with me for these mornings. I will wait here to see if anybody else wants to say anything as we close. If you do want to prepare tomorrow for tomorrow morning and you do want to think about what section blessed you or what you might want to bring up that would be awesome hey michelle i'm so glad i'll see your face tomorrow. yay christine <laughs> no 
I, I, and what do I call it when I don't put makeup on or hardly brush my hair? <laughs> Unplugged face. Oh, thank you, Christine. Yeah, Christine accepts me just the way I am, and I am so appreciative of you. You know, when you, yesterday I had this quick chat with someone who's facing some pretty dire medical needs right now, life-threatening. She was talking about, thinking about heaven, and, um, told her that I had done a lot of study about heaven because I was so intrigued by where my husband was, what could possibly be going on. But I just bring that up because I think, wow, you know, all of us get to spend eternity with each other. What is that going to be like? Um... Maybe you can take some time today to ask the Lord, what in the world are we going to be doing with him? How wonderful will it be? Donna Hardwick, Scotts Valley, California. You are such a blessing to me and to my daughter, Penny. Thank you. Donna leads the most unusually beautiful um, parent participation preschool environment I've ever been exposed to. Big plans for you, Donna. May they all come into fruition. Dear Michelle, out in Texas, being a blessing to her family, walking. Michelle and Christine, you both have teenagers. You both, um, I'm sure, could encourage each other, like with my teenagers. And Gail, who um, I don't really even know where I'd be without her. So I appreciate you, my sister. I hate to hit the end button, but I wish I could say more, but um, this ends our time in Genesis. Right. All right. So bless your day. I'll see you tomorrow. Please don't forget. All right. Bye-bye.